happy when I'm happy, singing all the while. I don't need nobody then to show me how to smile. When I've been out on the spree, toddling down the street with this little melody. Show me the way to go home. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, I'm home. I'm home for April Fool's Day. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you had a wonderful Easter. And hello, hello. Hello to you. All right, so what do we do tonight in the time that we have allotted to us? Well, I'm going to be doing a couple of... Uh, couple of topics here that I hope ropes you in for a little bit of a conversation. A little conversation with me. I have some news we can do up front. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the bait from over the weekend. We'll do that. What kind of bait? Easter bait. Holy day bait. Trying to bait us into all types of things. I have a, a post from a friend of ours, Aristophanes, who um, who's pretty much wrote a little bit about a an experience that he said was very bizarre, but I think is, uh, yeah, as bizarre as it is, it's a very common example of arrested development in people uh, in your life that you might have noticed. And this particular example, I find, um, I, I find particularly relatable. So I want to talk about that arrested development. Um, but there's more. There's more. I've got, oh man, I've got a, uh, I've got a, a story over here that we'll do in the second half on. Sleep vacations. People are taking sleep vacations. A sleep-deprived nation. I'd say a sleep-deprived species. Depending on where you live in the world, at least. I have other little extras and tidbits to throw into the mix. <laughs> and uh, and plenty of plenty of other questions to ask you. As we keep the, the, uh, the lines open throughout the entire show. Because I just want to hear from you. You know, how, how things were. Uh, any other weekend observances and uh, and 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 aha moments and anything that struck you funny? I'll tell you. After this show ends, we have the second session of the of the book club, and I can't wait to talk about that because it's just going to be so exciting with what is happening in the robe, uh, in the book, the robe, and uh, and I don't know. I don't know. That's going to be nice. And I, I actually have a question for you all tonight based on what was in that book. And uh, perhaps it uh, contributes a little bit to the the overall the overall fun. So tomorrow night I won't be on the air. Uh, it is it's my birthday tomorrow night so and I just figured you know I've done nights where okay, it's April 2nd. I'm gonna bring my family on and we'll just have like a kind of like a family night birthday night. but tomorrow I think I'm just gonna have dinner with Lauren and Aurora and my mom. what the what's going on here? What are you doing? What are you doing? Where do you come from? I I was I was at Ashley's house and it was so sad. I I I, I was I saw you. You're so sad. What? I was I was so sad. Why? Because 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 I was so sad because because I was wanted to hug you. Oh well, then hug me. Oh. Here's a hug. Oh. Look. What? Oh, the picture of me? Uh huh. What's with that? With the microphone? Uh huh. I'll tell. Yeah, I gotta show people that picture. It's somebody, somebody drew a very, very nice. Same thing. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm hmm. Okay. So then, is there anything else? I'm sure you're you're gonna start getting ready for bed now. Mm hmm. Guess what? We're gonna have a. We're gonna have. Some, we, we have some surprises coming your way. You, you know what, what, what after this day will be? What, what's after this day? What is it saying in the microphone? Daddy's birthday. Really? It's my birthday tomorrow? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? 
I, I would say, happy birthday to daddy. And after that, maybe, maybe we can say, happy birthday to my lovely mommy. Oh, well, mommy's birthday is going to be later on in the month. She's an April baby, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your turn. My turn? Okay, well, how about you say... S- say goodnight to everybody. Good night. Did you just hear your, your funny voice? Uh-huh. Good night. Say happy Good birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> you see how funny you sound? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> help! 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 Nobody can help you. Mom! <laughs> yes! Mommy! No, there's no mommy coming for you now. Mom! <laughs> Mom! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, mommy, you you can go to her now. Mom, mom. Okay, say thank, say say good night to everybody. Good night. Okay, everybody, th- and listen, go have a wonderful bath, and then you got to wake me up tomorrow morning. Sing me, sing me a happy birthday in the morning, okay? okay. All right, and then I'll take you to the bakery. All right, bye. What a nice move. Okay, you guys have a good time. <sighs> So that's why I won't be on air tomorrow night. Oh, I don't know. Just one, just one of those things. I can't wait to go back. See, I don't listen to these shows. I don't watch these shows. There was a time I watched the show after I would get off, and I would, you know, um, I, I still every once in a while, I, I would critique myself. But now, as soon as the show ends, I know exactly what I would have done different and I make little adjustments to myself and all that stuff without having to go back and suffer through watching myself. But when she's on the show, I will go back and I will see something. And I can't wait to go back and listen to her going, help, help. (laughs) That's going to be funny. (laughs) You see, you want me to do the book clubs. Book clubs mean that I do one show a week from Studio B, and that may happen. Um, so, okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's, uh, well, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything yet because we had a wonderful little visit. Okay, so the first one up is in the grab bag. Let's go into the grab bag. Um, oh, well, first, let me tell you what's going on with the rest of the weekend. Oh, I probably pissed somebody off out there. I'm talking too much about the show. After the Friday night episode, I had somebody actually comment before I banned, I, I, I blocked them from ever appearing on the YouTube the account again. Frank? Did he, did he censor somebody? Oh, with delight. With delight, delectable censorship. Loved it. Somebody actually got a stopwatch out on me. Okay, this the, the, the comment was something like, he just spent 13 minutes talking about the show. This is not the same show from years ago. Like, like look, this, this show sucks now. What the hell are you talking about? I was excited about the guests we had coming. I was going through the guest calendar. The guest calendar. Talking about book club. This this is what the show is all about. We're getting together. Sometimes it's a news heavy night. Sometimes we don't talk about anything newsworthy for days. And thank God for it. 13 minutes. Put a, took a stopwatch out for me. <laughs> Hide from channel. Don't worry. They'll be back. Because they're losers. Losers ain't got nothing to do. Anyway, let me tell you about some guests we have coming up this week. Uh, Robert Phoenix is going to be on with us on Wednesday night. That's going to be great. Got Robert Phoenix on in the first half. Ryan Gable is going to be calling in for a short segment in the second half. It's all going to be about eclipse synchronicities, uh, NASA, uh, Ryan Gable in the second half is going to break down how the NASA rocket launches is not a synchronicity or synchronistic uh, with certain types of Egyptian rituals for the sun and all that. It is just the ritual. He said he wanted to break that down. And also in studio is going to be my cousin Sherry. So we got Robert Phoenix up front, 
We're going to have uh, Ryan Gable on the, the back end of the episode and Cousin Sherry hanging out for the whole thing. On Thursday night, we're going to be talking about Tataria, that theory, with Jack from Picard's Ready Room. He'll be on. On Friday, the 5th, we have Max Ancaparato, my good friend, astrophysicist, who is actually not, he'll, he'll might have some eclipse insight, but also he has some insight into the rocket uh, rituals. <laughs> I'm going to ask him, do you, do you know about the rituals? What, what do they have you wearing when these rockets are launched? I don't, I don't know what his involvement is, but we're going to talk. So it's going to be, that'll be pretty good. And then next week is next week. So get excited. Stay excited. That's all I want from you guys is to be excited. Okay. All right. Uh, the first one up is a headline from KY3.com. This is a Missouri. So it came from Mark Swan. He always lets me know when crazy local stuff is happening. And, and here we go. Headline, popular Missouri fudge factory. You know it's from Mark Swan now, right? Popular Missouri fudge factory names winner at inaugural, inaugural competitive eating championship. After eating pounds, <laughs> this is going to be fun to read. After eating pounds and pounds of fudge. A man has been named the 2024 eating your, is this for real? Wait a second. The communities, this is for real? This is for real. Okay. I guess so. After eating pounds and pounds of fudge, a man has been named the 2024 eating Uranus fudge galactic champion. According to the Uranus Fudge Factory, which is along I-44 near St. Robert, James Webb of Sydney, Australia, ate 13.5 pounds of fudge in eight minutes. How do you do that without choking? I'm serious. I saw somebody, and if anybody lives near I-44 over there, um, and you know about this place, the Uranus Fudge Factory, please let me know. I'd actually am interested in, in having some of this fudge um, packed and sent out to me. But I once watched a uh, a, a, a stupid group of, of uh, college girls do a cupcake eating contest, and one girl almost died because you, you have to re remember that, yeah, you can get the first couple of cupcakes down quick, but then you're packing your esophagus full of cake, and it gets very, very dense after a while. And, uh, and, and it, it, it was almost catastrophic. Now, it's one thing to break up a cupcake or a cookie with some milk. It's another thing to have, fu I mean, fudge is, I mean, what, what are you going to do? That's, uh, that's like eating sludge. 13.5 pounds of sludge? This, I, I can't believe it's real. So, thank you to everyone involved. His prize, he, he won $2,500. And he now holds a new world record. Thank you to everyone involved in making this an epic event in Uranus. And special thanks to the ever so handsome yet humble Mayor Louis Keene for making it all possible, he said on Facebook. So there you go. If you're in, uh, there is another Florida-like headline coming out of Missouri. Okay. Here's another one for you from The Sun. The Sun says... Headline, trillions, trillions of bugs. The cicadas, cicadas. They're going to swarm in a once per 221 year mating frenzy in weeks. It, it, the last time it happened, it happened to the founding fathers. Trillions of cicadas are set to invade the United States for the first time in 221 years, scientists say. In late April, two large broods of periodical cicadas are expected to emerge from the ground for a noisy mating frenzy. Billions, even trillions of cicadas are going to emerge at the same time across 17 states. Chris Simon, a professor at UConn's Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, told Live Science. Don't worry, though, ladies and gentlemen. All the cicadas will be given five-star accommodations at the Roosevelt Hotel in Manhattan, along with $2,000 cash every month, as long as they vote Democrat in the 2032 presidential election. 2032. 
They soon will emerge at the same time for the first time in 221 years. Periodical broods are found in eastern North America and tend to emerge in large numbers. Well, by golly, between the cicadas and the lantern flies, I don't know what's going to be worse. I don't know what's going to be worse. All right, so this is... Um, all right, here we go. Last one, and this is... <laughs> I like this one, okay? The, Ukraine has a new super weapon. Did you hear about this? Does anybody know about the new, the new super weapon? Anybody there? Ukraine has a new super weapon against the Russians. This is it. The tide is finally turning. Headline... Lesbian power couple, top sniper, and machine gunner are taking on Putin's army. That's right. They look like the Vinman brothers with Snapchat filters on, but they are ready to go. There you go. Top sniper and machine gunners, lesbian power couple, taking on the entire Russian army. If I tell you the number of my confirmed kills, I'm putting a bounty on my head, Olga tells me with a grin and a twinkle in her eye. No, no, I think getting written up in Yahoo and Daily Beast is putting a bounty on your head. Her call sign is Cerebrus, the mythical multi-headed dog known as the Hound of Hades. Whoa. Whoa. Olga is a sniper in the Ukrainian army where she battles the hordes invading her homeland and doing very poorly at it, might I add. The highly trained killer, who is also... No you see how they, how they write about this shit? How they write about this shit. And then when they talk about, they talk about uh, people that go to show up to support the, Am uh, the Amos Miller uh, case in, in Pennsylvania... They'll say hordes of conservatives descended upon the courthouse. Highly trained. I can tell you one thing. I was calm as can be during my first kill, and I do not kill people. I kill enemies. Ugh. Cringe. Says this soon 24-year-old sniper Olga is also openly gay, which makes it all the more important because, as you know, Hitler, I mean, Putin just doesn't like doesn't like the gays so this is personal for her personal so there you go move over ghosts of kiev and the snake island commandos out there here comes the sniper dykes because they're going to take you all. i'm sorry there must be i know that there are a lot of gays and lesbians in this audience i have spoke proud proud american conservative types you got to find this hilarious. You got to find this 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 puppet work hilarious. It's so stupid. So stupid. I'm actually pissed off at Putin for not ending this decisively already so that we don't have to put up with this stupid shit with the new emerging heroes and, you know, folklore, all the the real-time folklore that's being created over here over this this sham of a war. Not a sham in the way that people haven't lost their lives. No, there's plenty of horrible things happening, um, anti-human things happening. But damn, man, needs this. Anyway, all right, so watch out. If you're a Russian out there in Ukraine, you better watch out for Olga and her girlfriend because they're coming for you. All right, we'll be right back with the rest of the show. I hope you guys and gals have found the opening uh, nice. And away we go. This is Max and Caparato at 12,060 feet. You can get as high as I am by watching the Quite Frankly podcast. You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? Let's run!
But my real name is Mr. Earl. Hey, it's a good time. Good time to settle down. You know, I see it's still, it's still light outside. You know, so I have to have this closed. That's the only thing. If, and if I open it up, then it kills the whole balance in the room. And all of a sudden I get real dark. It gets very weird. So that's what I just got to do on nights like tonight. Got those blackout curtains. And I welcome you aboard. Okay, so here's what we have a little bit uh, up front. I have to just say a thank you to Molly Artie in the chat room. Um, she and the Sentinel from the old Theta uh, chat room, uh, they are an item. And they're wonderful friends of the show. Molly is a great artist. She sent me a book of all of her self-portraits. And just really, really wonderful feel. And I uh, I really appreciate her and her talent. But this was really unexpected and incredible. I opened this up over the weekend on Saturday. I didn't know what the hell to expect. But then I saw this portrait. And I posted it on, on the Instagram, which I've been keeping pretty active lately. So those of you who are on, on Instagram and follow me there, you, you, you saw that. But take a look at this. This is from Molly Artie a portrait of me that is hanging right above this bookshelf over here in Studio B right now. I can't tell you how precious this is to me because for the style that she employed, where there's a little bit of that, there's that, that blur, there's, you know, it's, uh, it is also so highly detailed. And, um, it just creates such, such good feeling over here. And I put it up in the, I don't know, I, I just, like I said, it's, it's right above this bookshelf, right up there. Perfect. I was always looking for, looking for something to fill in that space over there. And, of course, the universe provides. So I just want to thank her so much. Uh, it's really great. I got to get some information from her. Uh, if she has an art shop or something like that, I can I can show everybody. And, of course, it didn't take long for my my friends to ruin it. And about 15 minutes after I posted this picture, I got a text message from my buddy Mike, and he sent me this. So there I am holding a now portrait of Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I can't. So it didn't take long for that to get ruined. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what else is going to come of it now, too. So go ahead, Internet. I guess I've set you up, and you just... <laughs> just <laughs> oh... The internet's been say it's been teed up now. Go ahead. You're all teed up. Anyway, thank you, Molly. That's all I wanted to say for real. Anyway, so here's uh here's the first thing I want to put out there. It leads into the whole Easter baiting, uh, baiting people on Easter, especially Christians. Headline from the New York Post. J.K. Rowling dares cops to arrest her for misgendering trans people after new woke hate crime law. It's getting bad out there. Getting bad out there with the, 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 the laws in Europe and all that stuff. Her next book could be Harry Potter and the Prisoners of Transcaban. J.K. Rowling is daring police in her native Scotland to arrest her for misgendering transgender people after the new woke hate crime law took effect on Monday. Freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal, she wrote on X. I'm currently out of the country, but if what I've written here qualifies an offense, as an offense under the terms of the new act, I look forward to being arrested when I return to the birthplace of Scottish Enlightenment. Scotland's community, safe, uh, community safety minister. Oh, oh, how horrible, how horrible a title. Community Safety Minister uh, Siobhan, Siobhan Brown told The Telegraph on Monday that Rowling's remark could be reported to police and investigated. Whether or, I mean, that, that's the whole thing there, too. Uh, I said something. Well, I think we're going to open up an investigation. Into what? This is what I said. What are you trying to investigate? Whether or not the police would think it was criminal is up to Police Scotland for that. Scotland's hate crime law went into effect on Monday. It bans hatred on the basis of age, disability. How do you ban hatred? How do you ban that? 
Uh, and is that really hatred? Seriously, is that really hatred if you misgender somebody, if you just simply don't believe in the fantasy that they are putting out there that through public declaration, drugs, surgery, and costumes, they are now someone completely different? That's hatred? You see, I'm going to say a few things tonight about about what needs to be done in the face of the baiting in a place like the United States where uh, these speech laws, they're not possible, at least at the moment. Anywhere outside the United States, obviously, we're seeing a, you, you really are, I mean, Canada, the UK, uh, Europe, it's, it's nasty out there. You do not have free speech. Far, far into a far uh, more degree than we, we, we don't. You know, uh, we have a lot of social pressures here. There's a lot of things with the social engineering is very, very tough. Um, it leads to a lot of self-censorship. There's a lot of different, co there's there's coercion that goes on. It's very de facto in many ways because um, our laws don't allow most of what is going on in such mundane ways now outside of the country. But this is something different. You know, over here where mockery and peaceful non-compliance can and should still take us very, very far in the fight against this mind virus. In a place like Scotland, there is some real things that need, aside from mockery, peaceful non-compliance being a necessity, where, I mean, you got to go to jail. People, it gets to a point where people, by the tens if not hundreds of thousands, need to be ready to go to jail to say that trans joke now, because now you have to, because now you have to. And that's, that's, that's tough. That's a tough thing. How much time are we going to spend in jail? How, how much of a J six situation is this going to be? How ruthless and brutal are they in making sure that everybody realizes that this is the new order of things. And you're going to have to uh, decide just how far you want to take this little rebellion of yours. But over there, they got a real problem. It, it has to, you know, you know, right now we have evil people who are, in this respect, restrained by a law that they cannot change, okay, with our, with our Bill of Rights and the First Amendment. Um, they're restrained by a law that they cannot change, and they're not going to have the majorities to ever change. But uh, on the other hand, in places like Scotland, you need, the, there is no barrier between the psychopaths, the psychopaths who have spent a lot of time investing in their growth inside of the government to take it over like that you know that like that uh that fungus that takes over the ants do you ever see that the the fungus that just takes it over may turns them into zombies and then just consumes the ant uh, eventually replaces what was once there replaces the host with something new i mean that needs to get rooted out you need to take that out because, uh, I mean, right now, it's, we can still kind of live with the fact that we have a huge and vicious psychopath class that is, you know, uh, dictating things down to us from the government level because there's a little bit of a buffer there. Yeah, we have to take, uh, we have to take on all of their, their yapping, their gum flapping and all that stuff, and their rabble rousing. They, they, they rile up people around us so that we're fighting with our neighbors, we're fighting with our friends and our family, and... And they create the idea that there's some kind of a class and race and gender war that's going on constantly. And uh, and that's what they do because they can't get us to just shut up. They just create war for us. But man, in Europe, you got to find a way to take these people out of power. You have to. You have to. Um, if uh, especially, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But you got to vote really hard out there got to vote real hard that's gonna be interesting to see if they actually go as far as arresting jk rowling now this comes uh at the tail end of an easter weekend where over here in the united states the memos went out that it that on march 31st which landed on which easter landed on this year it was the national trans visibility day trans visibility because they're in invisible otherwise real issue is nobody cares they haven't cared for a long time there's people out there with a lot of problems i've got my own problems you have your own problems 
And uh, th- but the, these are the 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 um, these are one of those groups that just, despite all their problems, they like to think of them as superpowers, and they want to be talked about and worshipped constantly. You know, it's not just about slinking into the corner, enjoying your life, and just becoming a part of the scenery, the tapestry that is human existence. No, no, they want it. They they want to be the the star of the show, and of course, they have no talent. Um, nothing really to look at. So the more you examine them, the more you realize these are fucking circus sideshow freaks. And then if you say it, then it's just like, what? What? You know, I, I was willing to just live with people being different than I around me. That Everybody around me has some different needs that need to be met. They have they have different things. I don't know. I, I love this one from April, this uh, one Tumblr post from April 1st, 2021. Never forget it. From Easy Squeeze on Tumblr. Every day is Trans Visibility Day. Because you don't pass as well as you think you do. Oh, ain't that the truth, brother or sister? Um, but anyway, that got around a lot yesterday. That it was trans visibility, day of visibility. And the fact that that was just being, that was all that was being pushed by official sources. Whereas they, you know, they, they're very hesitant to talk about anything religious, say anything draw any uh any attention to anything of, of real substance to what easter is i know it makes a lot of people uncomfortable and good who the hell gives a shit who the hell gives a shit you know and the real thing is that easter easter is one of those things where it interferes with the animal's long uninterrupted string of winter and spring award show holidays it is an unwelcome speed bump on the road to the self-worship sex holiday months. Uh, it's exactly what you would expect a fungal breakaway nation to do. Fungal talking like the ant. The ant that has been taken over by the fungus, the host that has been consumed by the parasite, and then finally that there's nothing but the parasite there. That's exactly what they're trying to do here. Now, um, it's bait, though. It's bait. You can say, well, it's usually the end of the month or it's usually on, you know, Mar- I saw it was March 29th one year. It's March 30th one year. It's March 31st this year. It just happens to be on, on Easter. So it's not like it's a set day. So the proclamation went out on Easter, and that is what the government rolled with. Now, so much of it is bait. Is This is what I want to talk about and just get some opinions from you along the way. They're flailing. This is what I see in this country, at least. Flailing. They are likely to do something. These are the people who are likely to do some cowardly shit like set fire to a car that they own or a church. But uh, these are largely disabled people. You know, the people who create them, the system that groomed them, created them, enabled them, they know that they are mostly useful uh, as a sacrificial lamb. And that's the real thing here. Sacrificial lambs and martyrs. They are baiting the world into being the enemies that they want us to be. And you just need to, at that moment, at least what I'm doing, when I kind of scoff off the nonsense, when I see it, I just try to say a prayer, try to calm myself down, and that's really it. I mean, you never give an inch, obviously. I, I'm never, I would never tell anybody out there, um, you know, I'm not going to tell anyone how to handle business if real trouble ever came to your front door. But trust me, this, this is bait. And bait should be met with ruthless mockery and peaceful noncompliance, in my humble opinion. In my humble opinion, because I'm telling you, uh, the, the, the next just war, okay, the next crusade is not going to be the Christians versus an army of gender-confused Instagram models. That is not the new uh, crusade. If there is going to be a time when there is a need for war, if that need is upon us at some point, we're going to know it as individuals or as larger congregations. But this is all bait because they're because otherwise they're literally killing their gains. You ever you ever, you ever look into the uh, the fitness brands, the fitness bl- vlogs, and all that stuff? You're killing your gains, bro. Eating this at that time is killing your gains. Doing this at this time during your day is killing your gains in the gym. They're killing all of their gains. What, what, whenever they open their mouths in public now, they kill their gains. It's so far beyond anything, this nonsense. 
all these groovy special interest groups, this this uh, intersectionality crap. It's so far beyond anything that could be graciously sympathized with. That is long gone. We were talking about that last June. All they have left is the same mean-spirited, obscene, irrational behavior that they try to project on everybody around them. But they're nuts. I mean, how much more po- how how polite can you be with people who are absolutely out of touch with reality and are nuts to the point where they are flippant about the idea of putting children into psychological harm's way or anything else like that? Fuck that. They've hit the ceiling. And um, and they know that the time for peaceful persuasion is done. And so they have to create a need for war. But they're never going to attack. They're trying to create a situation where they could be attacked. Okay? They're only ever, ever uh, effective in the role of the victim. So I say crack jokes and, uh, and pray for people. I mean, think about Easter. All this went through my head yesterday. And I had a lot of time to think because as much as I had a really, really good time with my family, I was also really wiped out by the, by the second half of the day. It was a tiring day. So I had a lot of moments where I was just sitting there and listening to people talk and just thinking to myself. And every once in a while, I would, um, you know, I would get an update that flashed on my phone and I would just see things. I wasn't looking into it too much because uh, I just didn't want to uh, ruin my, my vibe. But that I had enough time to think to myself there too. When I'm watching Jesus of Nazareth or King of Kings or anything else that we had on the, on the, the network feed or anything that was on television... And I said to myself, you know, here are these scenes where Jesus is hanging from the cross and he's forgiving the people who are killing him in real time. He's he's forgiving the people who are killing him in real time at that moment. I got to have a little bit more restraint. I I, got to have a little bit more restraint in, 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 in being able to stay calm and collected in what I see flashing up on my screen and flashing on my screen of my phone and all this stuff. He's, you know, a proclamation from the demented white house that is obviously trying to bait everybody into, into, into pulling them away from a, 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 a joyous occasion to start thinking about transvestites and their issues. You know what? Uh, if that's what they're dedicating their time to on a day like Easter, then uh, hopefully they they're able to write the path before you know they and they alone are going to have to you know pay the tab when the tab is issued and um and yeah man yeah that's i i all i would say is don't take the bait and now that lent is over I find myself wanting to keep that lenten promise going with not not really uh getting into the weeds too much on Twitter. I mean, I'm sure I'll slip up because I wasn't perfect during Lent, but I did. I mean, I think 97% better than I was. But yeah, don't take the bait, please. Save yourself some trouble. Save yourself some trouble because the people baiting, they've got the real issues. All right, 737. Um, Here's what I have for you. I have two questions. I have two questions. Number one, you can call in right now if you are a lesbian sniper. I have set up a lesbian sniper hotline. Please, if you are out there and you happen to be a lesbian sniper, call in. Tell us anything anything you can about the world, the world of lesbian sniping. Okay? And do not, eat, listen, I don't care if you, you want to call in and LARP, that's fine. Just make it a believable one. And be a woman, okay? So that's number one. The Lesbian Sniper Hotline is open. It's 914-369-1236. <laughs> Let's see what comes through there, if anything at all. The other thing is this. I wanted to ask you this. It's a question, since we're talking about Easter. I don't know what it is about the book, The Robe, but when I read it, I felt like I was, and still am, and I'm, I'm going to tell Steve and Jonathan this tonight when he's co-hosting with me, I feel like I'm walking the streets, at least in those first chapters, I feel like I'm walking the dusty, ancient streets of Jerusalem 
during the most consequential, one of the most consequential weeks in human history. Okay, starting with Palm Sunday. And it was nerve wracking and it was exciting to read all at once. And I'm feeling this stuff, you know, it's really written well. So it's an exciting, emotionally investing read. But here's my question to you, and it's a hypothetical. It's a time travel hypothetical. If you can spend two weeks in Jerusalem from Palm Sunday, maybe about, maybe until about 10, yeah, two weeks from Palm Sunday on. So you're there past the resurrection. Your time traveled there. You're going to be, there's, there's no, there's no fear of you getting left behind. Okay. As soon as your time is up, you're going to just zap out and you're coming back home. You are given proper attire, so you're not going to, you know, stand out like a sore thumb. You're going to be given a little bit of local money. You are also going to have the ability to not only, not only speak Aramaic, but also Latin. Would you go to bear witness to the whole thing and to be around for everything? Because, you know, there's Palm Sunday, then there's, there's you know, beating, beating the shit out of the money changers. There's, you know, but there's a lot you could witness that... I, there's a lot. And what if, what if something happens the way you don't expect it to? Would you do that? Or would you say, no, I'm fine right here in the 21st century, um, cloaked in my faith, and that's where I want to be? Okay? So you, there's, uh, and again, there's no chance of you getting stranded there. There's no chance of you screwing anything up. But uh, what would you do? You can call in with that, 914-200-0269. That's an all-purpose line. And um, and then anything else, just uh, whatever the hell else you, else you want to talk about. It's, uh, it's 740. It's 740. Let's go and uh, and talk to you guys for about 20 minutes or so before we bounce over to quitefrankly.tv. And in the meantime, I'm going to throw you another little thing to, to chew on. Our, my buddy Aristophanes... He was talking about a, an experience he had. He linked back up with an old clique of guys that he used to game with over 10 years ago, okay? And I want to uh, I want to read this to you because I don't know if this is something that you have experienced in any way, shape, or form. It's an example of arrested development within a group of guys, okay? First, I want to take a call on the Lesbian Sniper Hotline. Lesbian Sniper Hotline, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Frank. Yes, who is this? This is Miss Juba Denaya. Okay, Miss Juba Denaya. Okay, how are you? Do you um? And are you a lesbian sniper? Well, it's so funny you you should ask. Oh. I, I I am not personally a lesbian. Oh, I, I can't hear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I can't hear you though because you're very very muffled. Are you on speakerphone? Um, I have headphones on, Frank, but I do not have the speakerphone on. Well, give us a little something that we should know about. Uh, anything you can tell us about the mental makeup, or you know what we should look out for with these two um, these two snipers out there in Ukraine. Are they capable with their special lesbian powers to take out the entire Russian army? Well, okay. My story, Frank, is I went to a very famous psychic who told me in a past life that I was a lesbian sniper. So I am not a sniper. I do not have any special skills, Frank. But, but I do have a very, a very crucial story about my past life as a lesbian sniper. Well, okay, so okay, so uh, real quick, in your past life, you were a lesbian sniper. Where, where were you? Where are you doing your sniping? What was the the conflict and where? Go ahead. It was the summer of eighteen forty six in Poland. Me and my four butch friends were. Having a field day, Frank. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry if you can't if you can't get this crisper. We can't hear what you're saying. I think you said it was 1830 something in Poland, but not a lot of people are understanding what you're saying right now. 1837, the summer of 1837 in Poland. Hmm. Okay. Me and my me and my three butch friends, we were perched up on each corner. Hmm. I was shot. I was shot in the heart, and and Miss Cleo told me that my three, my two other butch friends came and rescued me, Frank. So you, so that's all, I, that's all you that's were. That's all I know. Okay, 
Well, I thank you for the call. There you go. Uh, there, there, I mean, hey, that's, that's a big one right there. She obviously wasn't a very good lesbian sniper because she was she was shot in the chest. So I guess she wasn't, wasn't hiding very much. But thankfully, her three butch friends were there to save her in Poland in the 19th century. Very, very progressive army they had. All right. All right. So uh, here's a little something for you. 914-914-200-0269, call in with whatever you want. Here's Aristophanes, what he says. These 10 guys he was with, they were playing games about 10 years ago, and they met up again. They all met as teenagers, and they, they uh, and games together for like 10 years before they kind of fell off, and then they stopped regularly gaming due to marriage and kids and all that. He said, I joined on one of them playing Hell Divers, and we caught up a bit. They've got a Discord, and I was looking into, it was like I was looking into a time capsule. They all are still the exact same guys, which is good, but also bizarre. It's been 10 years, and maybe a few of them have live-in girlfriends. None of them have kids except the guy who already had kids. They're still doing exactly what they were doing when I got busy and left. They go to work, they come home, they play video, video games, they go to sleep, and they, they repeat it. And out of the 10 or so of them, three of them are now sneering, opinionated leftoids. It's always weird how that happens. I asked him, I said, were well, these guys in corporate life? Because that, that'll turn you into a, a, a retard real quick. Political retard, I should say. The other guys are apolitical grillers who just kind of ascend to it and only chime in to be funny. But it's bizarre that 10 years can go by, particularly this scent of 10 years, and they were in such a state of arrested development. At first, I felt like it was comfy because it was like traveling back in time. But then I realized you aren't really supposed to be in the same exact place in life 10 years later. And now it feels bizarre and sad to see. I told them, I said, I got to tell you, man, that I think it has a lot to do with this, these, these thoughts and these theories about liminal spaces, about these links to the past, these at least um, surface level links to the past and how nostalgia has a, uh, a little bit of a sadness connected to it now. But the arrested development of people, uh, you know, especially, in, I, I know that, especially with groups of guys, I've seen that. I felt that. Nobody's really willing to dive into anything too me uh, meaningful. There's only, there's only a little, there's a little derision. There's a little bit of uh, joking there. And then there was just nothing else. Interesting. We're going to hold that over to the second half. Let's take some more calls on this, that, and the other thing. Uh, 985, you're on the air. Go ahead. 985. Yes, sir. Hello. How are you? Who's this? Frank, this is Big Al. Big Al, welcome to the show. This is a real quick one. Okay. But uh, my wife has made the comment that Biden was off by one day. He should have done the LBT whatever thing today. On April then Fools? it would be April Fools. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do that. You see, you see, now, we could think that way. We could think that way. But uh, that, of course, would be an incredible insult. That would be incredible <laughs> insult. I mean, it's one thing to make that announcement on Easter, and everybody says, oh, get over yourself. If he had waited 24 hours to make this pronouncement on <laughs> April Fool's Day, it would have been, he would have been in press conferences all day apologizing. You're right. It's a, you're yeah. under the right. <laughs> well, thanks but for that. Yeah. Just a quick one to leave you with. It, it's, it's, a, it's an astoundingly um, insightful one to leave us with. You know? Oh, Trans Visibility Day on Easter. Get over it. Get over it. If he had waited 12 hours, if it was past midnight, April 1st, there would have been hell to pay. Hell to pay. All the pink pussy hats would have been out in uh, Times Square today. What do you mean, April Fools? What's joking? About? What's a joke about this? Don't you understand? Suck. Anyway, you know how the you know how it goes. Five four one. You're on the air. Go ahead, brother Frank. Your Bro friend Zoe. Hello, Zoe. How are you? Good, my man. I just, uh, you know, since you and I celebrate back-to-back -back birthdays, I thought I would call and personally wish you a happy birthday since you won't be on the air tomorrow. I Well, thank you. So, and, But you you are April 3rd? I thought you were April 4th. 
I'm the third. Wow. We've I... had a we've had a slew of them this week. Uh, our mod, Joelaine uh, Foxwell, her birthday was Saturday. You tomorrow, me the following day, and there's somebody else on the fourth, but I just can't think of who it is. But after that last breathy phone call, Frank, I I just wanted to give you a little bit of normalcy. That's all. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> Love you, man. <laughs> Understood now. All right, man. Well, listen, uh, I will be back on the air on uh, on Wednesday. It'll be a good one. Hopefully you call in uh, again. And if not, I got to write it down. I'll wish you a happy birthday on Wednesday. Thank you kindly, brother. Be take, good. Take care, All bro. the best. See ya. There you go. There's Brother Zoe. All of us, uh, all of us, 4th of July conception babies. Zoso. Wednesday. Boyth Day. Okay. Great. Let's take a call here. Uh, 202, you're on the air. Is this Hot Legs? It is Hot Legs. How are you? Um, and almost happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And happy Easter to you. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling great tonight. Um, I, I'm not a lesbian sniper, though. Sorry to tell you that, but. <laughs> I have been uh, accosted by one, but I did not become one because of that. Okay. So All right. That. She, uh, thankfully, she didn't shoot you, though. No, she was a drummer, though, so maybe you can identify. Oh, okay. <laughs> Say no more. I, I want to address your uh, your comment about the book, so I did catch up. Um, thank you for that with uh, The Robe, and I also watched the movie for the first time this weekend. Wonderful. Um. So I think uh, I think you're on a similar journey as the robe, and maybe that's why you identify with it. But it, it does have some pretty glorious parts that I've highlighted, even my Kindle, you know, where it kind of stops me and makes me a little breathless. Like, wow, that was an amazing sentence. You know, I want to go back and read that sentence again. And I guess that's what you've been talking about is the writing is sometimes breathtaking and then it's sort of normal and then it's breathtaking again. Um, so I do see... I do see the brilliance in that writer a lot. Um, the question about going back to Jerusalem, if I could, would I? Um, would that was your question, right? Yeah, yeah, would you? I would go, but only because I want to see it for my own eyes. Although, in a way, I'm not sure that I, I want to, like, challenge the way I feel right now. Like, faith is faith, but when you see it, you know it. I guess the only reason I would is if I could be assured to come back and tell everybody I know so that they would believe me finally. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I that was something that had, I think it's, it's it ties into a question that I had asked Timothy Gordon one night when we were talking about Thomas Aquinas and, and, the, uh, and the ways to know, um, the ways to prove the existence of God. And I said, just like through, through logic, and... I, I said, you know, the, the, they're, they're incredible exercises and they're really, really um, enlightening. But at the same time, if you have the proof, what does that do to faith? If you suddenly know, you know, um, that that is that does that not compete with faith? If you have knowledge, then what, you can't have you can't have a, a pure faith at that point, because like you said, it was replaced with a knowing with a an actual uh, you know, an, an experience that goes beyond, beyond that, uh, that confidence you had. So, um, but yeah, I, this, this has been a wonderful book and I'm glad that we have at least four more weeks to go. Well, you know, we see, and we know things to be very true today, regardless of how we prove them and can prove them. People don't believe. So I don't know that it would matter. Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But this was great. And you had, you had a good, uh, weekend though, I, I assume. It was peaceful, and uh, I just watched the lack of barges going up and down the Chesapeake Bay. That's a little freaky now. Oh, yeah. So, oh, so you're right there? You're right, I'm right there. Th oh, damn. And it's going to be like that so, for what? How long? I, you know, who knows? I don't believe anything anymore. <laughs> I did see a couple of barges going up that are working on taking the steel away, so stuff is happening. But it's distinctly quiet on the bay and a little, a little eerie, like it was during COVID. You know, mm. no planes and stuff. It's, it's definitely noticeable. So when you hear something, you know, people run outside to look and see what it is. 
Well, listen, I guess uh, soak up the soak up the silence while you can. That's true. Well, thank you. And uh, again, have a wonderful birthday tomorrow. And glad you had a good Easter. Oh. I look forward to seeing some pictures of eggs being dyed, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we got some good pictures over here. I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll see what I can share. And and other than that, maybe I'll see you at nine o'clock for the book club. You will. Take care. Take care. See you later. All right. That's great. You know, I was just about to go into some excerpts that I had found in this, too. I said, but no, we we only have a couple more minutes. I want to get some more calls in. 719, go ahead. You're on the air. 719? Hello? Uh, yeah. This uh, is uh, Dwayne. How are you doing today, Frank? Dwayne, great to have you on, man. All right. How are you doing? Oh, well, I'm doing well. Doing? Yeah, yeah. No no, okay. com- no complaints. Okay. With, with what you're actually talking about right now, believe it or not, and I'll say it, um, my IQ is 138. And the thing is, believe it or not, I'm sitting there talking to you. I can get up and walk. I can hear. I have tinnitus, Meniere's, and PTSD. But believe it or not, I was shot in the head, 40 caliber above the left ear, out the right cheek, September 16th, 2007. So with the conversation, the Lord is real. Mm. That's it. How it, did you? Did you? Can you expand on that a little bit? Obviously, you had a, a really. I can. I can. I can expand. September sixteenth, I got pulled over by a Box Springs police officer. That's in Dallas County, and I'm currently in Colorado Springs because I fled the area uh, sixteen years ago. Um, but actually, I was pulled over for. We don't know what it was, but the thing is, he pulled out his taser, told me to step out of the vehicle. I put it in drive, and I went to leave the scene, and my dad was a police officer, so I know the law. I went through college, and psychology and all that, but the thing is, after me getting shot in the head, what happened was he actually pulled the mace taser whatever you call it and um tried to infiltrate on me and i put it in drive and i fled the scene at that one point in time he pulled his gun and fired twice into the vehicle the first one hit the roof the second one hit me above the left ear the thing is is that if a lot of people are thinking that their life is totally screwed up right now and that they're going through what we're going through with this quote unquote Biden, Trump, BS, blah, 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 all this other shit. The thing is, if a person can survive a gunshot to the head, then I think the Patriots, they can survive. They can do it. If I can do it, I think, why well, no, you can do it. Um, your guest and What's that one friend that you have on? Um, I can't remember his name. Matt? Matt. Is that Matt? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's so fucking cool because he has done jobs that other people won't do. But he will actually continue to do what he has to do to actually survive. And that's amazing. And the one thing for me, yes, I'm on disability. Yes, I get a check every month. But the thing is is that, okay, there's a lawsuit right now in federal court. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if I have one or two million. It doesn't matter. The thing that matters is the actual friends. And uh, Joe Elaine, and there's a couple more on Foxhole that that I uh, I text or whatever. They're amazing. But the thing is, the main reason I'm calling, my birthday is April 7th. Yours is the third, I think. Is second. that right? Tomorrow, second. Oh, second. And then Zoso is the third? Mm-hmm. Okay. So an Aries, you know what an Aries is. They don't give up. And what? we don't, we don't, we don't put down the hammer unless... Our life is insane. And, but anyway, Frank, thank you for taking the call. 
and um, I'll get back in the chat. But um, guys, well, can just you get can, ready? Well, we don't we don't know what's going to happen. Understood. No, understood. And, and let me and ask you. I, hold on. I, hold on. I, I lost a friend. Hold, hold on a second. I, I gotta ask. I gotta ask you a question because. You're about to get off. I'm about to jump into the intermission, and I um and I I just need to know wh- what do you mean you're driving? So you got pulled over, and you the officer was approaching your driver's side window with his taser drawn, and then you just booked it. Yep. Why? And then he dropped he dropped the taser because my dad was a police officer, and when he said, I know illegal, I know illegal pullovers and it was in the illegal pullover how the thing is <clears throat> because through court documents they had no reason to pull me over yeah but but you I didn't have but, but what I i'm saying not doing anything go ahead what go i'm ahead. saying is that you didn't have court documents at the time it was just all happening in real time how were you able to assess this was an illegal pullover and you were going to risk pulling away it took me two years and it literally took me two years to talk. It took me three years. No, it took me two years to walk. It took me three years to think. So in answer to your question, I don't think I can answer that question, believe it or not. Um, but the one thing is, is that the FBI stepped involved or stepped up, but they totally obliterated the whole case. Okay. That's why there's a lawsuit right now. But the thing is, is that what you're saying is April 7th, Aries, they're good people. We are good people. Well, then good. And we survive. We survive for a reason. And we have. Okay. We've got the heart. We've got the soul. And we've got the fight. All right. And verbally, verbally, initially, yep. whatever. I mean, yes. Okay. Yes, Frank. I was shot in the head. <laughs> okay. So how can I, I be? How can I be <laughs> all right. Listen, smart? sir, I, I get you. I can't you. be this smart. Bro. I know. I know. How can, how, how I know. I know. I know. I, well, listen, well, I'm going to try to figure that out. On the se- I'm going to try to figure that out in the second half of the show. How can he be so smart after getting pulled over by the, uh, the, the cop and, driving away and getting shot in the head. I I, I don't know what's going on. I, I got to be honest. I, I don't understand. I understand the message of, hey, stick with it. You know, you'd never be, you, you would be surprised how much that you could survive in life. You know, or you how much you can put up with and to thrive under conditions that may not seem to be um, optimal. But uh, outside of that simple message, I don't know what the hell just happened. And, but I but I love the caller. Thank you so much for calling in. And I hope he calls in again. Let's go to the second half, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to uh, I'm going to invite you all to click that pilled.net link. The quite frankly.tv. You can go to quite frankly.tv right now. Two clicks. Come on over. It's going to be a lot of good fun in the second half. More of your calls. We're going to talk about sleep vacations. I have some other cool intro, um, some other cool extras over here. And your calls are necessary tonight. So do it. Two clicks to fight the new world order, to support new media. Don't give me that, oh, what am I going to do, follow them all over the internet? What am I asking you to do, walk two city blocks? I'm not asking you to do that. Come hang out, pill.net, quite frankly, TV. It's all free. It's just far more independent than where we are right now, and we're just trying to make some uh, investments in independent. That's all. So I hope to see you there. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back. The rest of the show is available exclusively at pill.net. Follow the link in the description of the episode. Get signed up. It's that easy. Or head on over to quitefrankly.tv. Just press play. No paywalls, no censorship, no strings attached. So head on over, quitefrankly.tv, powered by Foxhole and pilled.net. It's intermission time, folks. Time out to press the like button. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. 
Welcome to intermission. We'll, we'll be right back. Yeah, intermission. Entering, quite frankly. Quite frankly. Quite frankly. Quite frankly. Quite frankly. Quite frankly. Watch, quite frankly, and 